What's up, guys? We're here. Welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to be going over my strategy or at least the strategy that you should be trying to do to max out your Aether in the Infernal Horde. So I've come over here. I made a little spreadsheet here with some pictures and just kind of like some stuff from uh, my last run. And I got 600. This is a T7 because T7 should be the ones that you're farming the most. Okay, this is the most efficient compared to T8. However, if you have lightning spear, something like that, um, barrage or even landslide druid, then you could farm T8s like crazy and get upwards of over a thousand uh, aether, even like 1500 aether, and just be absolutely insane. So, hell or the infernal horde. So, when it comes to infernal horde, I think a lot of people get a little, um, they get a few, th a few things like with the boons and banes misunderstood and how they work so every single time you finish a tier you're going to get boons and banes to pick from which is these right here on this right side and these are just pictures just to showcase like how it actually looks when you're picking or fighting the selected boon so when it comes to the order of what you're trying to do is maximize your aether you want to pick these ones that i have at the top all the way down to the ones at the bottom um, however, there is a huge problem when it comes to the Infernal Horrors with all this is that all of this is complete RNG. So in between each round, you are going to have three of these that spawn and they're completely random, which is a huge bummer. And it's a, it really, really sucks because it affects how much Aether you're going to get uh, in each Infernal Horde run. Now, because of the amount of Aether that you can achieve, and the the worth and rewards from opening up like the materials um chest because you get so many materials to masterwork your gear to me it's still not worth it like if you go out of out of nine waves you go the first three waves and you don't get any of the good banes and boons just to end it and start over to try to get that perfect infernal horde run because even if you're getting 400 500 or like 800 900 on a t8 you know, you're still getting a lot of resources, so it's worth it no matter what. I mean, 10 minutes of your time, you know, 10 or 12, 13 minutes of your time to get upwards of thousands of materials in one run as opposed to doing pits is just worth it. So let me go over my strategy here and what you really need to select here and what you need to do. So I do want to give a big shout out to my teammates and my community who played with me. We, we've just run hordes after hordes after hordes. Um, trying to do this so I've kind of just broken this down it's just a very quick list because I want I don't want to confuse you guys I don't want to show all the different ones that you could pick from I just want to show you the ones that you need to be looking out for when you go through your infernal horde runs so at the very top everything is based on hellborns okay hellborns spawn the most and reward the most aether when you're going through all of this okay now one thing I have to preface on with doing a Infernal Horde is, and why T7 is so popular over T8, is because the more monsters that you can kill in your minute wave, the more Aether that you can get depending on the Banes and Boons that you have selected. So you need to be, having, you need to be running builds that can kill monsters very, very quickly to keep spawning them over and over and over again. So... Hellborn when spawned, Hellborn damage, and spawn events faster are the three best uh, Bane slash boons you need to be looking for, which is these three right here. So Hellborn plus one Hellborn when spawn. So whenever they spawn, you're going to get more Hellborns, and each Hellborn grants additional Aether. Hellborn damage also grants an additional Aether. So the more Hellborns that you're fighting, the more Aether that you're going to receive. Now, whenever you can, normal monsters do increase damage, but killing them spawns aether events much faster which would be like your hellborns okay or the masses the the these like etheric masses it would spawn these more often so that way you can do more of the events which give you more aether so on and so forth so these are going to be the top three that you're going to be looking for every single time next up on the list in the yellow which is like your mid tier is like hellfire rains upon thee and then the waves start the uh, etheric masses okay so down here you have hellfire rains upon you at the end of each wave it spawns one to three aether this is actually getting a huge buff coming in a couple days so this one's going to be even better 
But next is the etheric masses. There's going to be times where you don't really have a very good boon to pick from or bane. So etheric masses just dealing more damage. They don't really hurt you in any way. It's very easy to dodge. You see that they got these little waves here. You know, it's three waves. You just stand in the wave that's not being shown where damage goes and you kill this and you get more aether, which is fantastic. The best one, if you have to get one of these, is the on a wave start, you spawn one of these, which gets your events going, which is very, very good. Okay, don't worry too much about the damage on these ones because it's not really a big deal. You're, you're going to destroy it faster before it can do any damage in the meantime. Uh, Hellfire Rains Upon You is a very good one, but it also does a lot of damage when you're doing the uh, Infernal Hordes. So this spawns throughout the entire minute, each single wave. However, this does really spawn with Hellborns, okay? This really, really works out with Hellborns really, really well, and it can pair with them and just spawn a bunch of, bunch of monsters. So, because the monsters that it does spawn, you kill those and you can get Hellborns, which is very, very good. Now, anything after this is basically the worst possible things that you can get. So an Infernal Demon has your scent. Yeah, you get big eyes when you see the 25 Aether, but that would be your Burning Butcher here. However, like even with really good builds, it does take a second to kill these. Um, so it's not really like the best Banes and Boons to pick. But if you really have like a bunch of bad ones, like Elite Damage is just increased with no Aether increase and the other ones like doesn't do anything, it's really bad. Or it's this one right here, like getting your um the big aether lords anything like that then yeah take it and then you're fine to go but any of the other ones like the aether lords those are all bad any of the ones that give you bonus um aether for destroying the uh council those are bad you really want to look for these right now now if you don't have any choices and they're all bad uh, you know it's like picking the lesser of three evils then go for just whatever can give you aether or just pick one that is just like doesn't really hinder you wave to wave like you can even get the one where you kill an etheric mass and then you just you know it slows you down like something like that is still fine just to kind of move things along um i hope that the rng on these get better in the future but with that said if you just follow this strategy and just look for these then you can always hit 600 aether on t7 and you can always hit a thousand aether or more on t8 which is fantastic um, again, I do want to preface that even following this strategy or any other creators that are out there that this is all based on RNG. I can tell you that I've gone six out of nine waves and I've never seen these three Banes and Boons. So sometimes you just don't get the dice roll and then sometimes you do. Then there's waves where I've gotten, you know, a thousand or just under a thousand on T7 because all I got was these three Hellfire and just like got the masses and just i like i think i got three of these so it's 150 percent faster on spawning the events and we just were destroying everything so there's going to be a balance however if you can just look for these ones as you're going through and just always picking those no matter what the other ones are then you're really going to get a lot of aether and you're going to maximize your returns when you finish killing the fell console at the end and then also keep in mind, they always drop a huge amount of Aether as well. So you can always open up the GA chest, which is getting a buff, and then spend all of this on either gold or uh, the mats re resources. I would always open that one if you can to master worker gear. This has been a godsend RIP to the pits because nobody runs that anymore unless you want to challenge your build. It is definitely not run for resources. So hopefully this doesn't get nerfed in the future but right now this is a strategy i would be looking for we are getting some major buffs here so maybe it'll change here in a couple days but i wanted to bring this video just in case if nothing really seriously changes here so yeah guys like the video let's get this over 50 likes comment down below let me know what you guys have been using your strategies or maybe there's just a bane and boon i overlooked that i'm just not thinking about or i'm not paying attention to let me know down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe if you're new and as always stay gaming and i'll see you guys in the next one Peace.